There we go. So some reminders. First off, I know it's not Friday. So if you remember what I said on Friday, um, all the folders got pushed back. Uh, so the lecture I originally had planned for Friday, we're going to be doing today, um, which means let me get the pen out that this lecture, not on the test. So what we go over today is on test three. Uh, test two, Wednesday, 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Again, I don't care when you take it, just as long as you do it on Wednesday. Um, open note. So make sure you have your equation sheet or whatever you want to use ready to go, um, because I will not be providing that to you. So if you wondered how I make those, literally what I do to make the equation sheets is I just go over the PowerPoints that we did in class. And every time I see an equation, I copied and pasted it into Word. And that's what I gave you on test one. So um, at the very least, that's, that's what you should do. You should probably know how to use the equations as well and what they mean. Um, but yeah, so make sure you do that. Um, we're still going to do uh, Proctor U, Proctor, I don't know how to spell because um, I would like to make sure that one, you aren't like uh, working in groups on this. It's even though it's open note, it's still individual. It's based on your study skills and organization skills. Um, and it's you taking the test. It's not, you didn't pay someone to do it or something like that. Um, the restrictions for Proctor U, um, should be more or less off in that like you should be able to, if you're one who organizes on a computer, you should be able to navigate like uh, through your computer to look at files if you wanted to. Um, I'll just warn you right now that none of my questions are Googleable. So if you put it into Google, you're not gonna get anything back that, that will help you on that question. Um, so yeah, don't waste your time doing that. Um, but since it's open note, and I said this in the announcement, and it's one of my fears of an open note, but that does not mean that you should study less just because you have your notes. I'm gonna tell you right now, if, if you don't study, your notes aren't gonna help you. You, don't, you can look at how I did a problem, but if you don't actually know how to do it yourself, you're just kind of going to be guessing at like what I did and probably end up with the wrong answer anyways. So um, study just as hard as you would if it was closed note. And those open notes are just really help you with your like organization and maybe you don't have to memorize as much, but yeah, you should still study hard. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that's that's the way to go that like you study like even harder. Um, Cause I remember just, just to give you a little antidote, like the reason why um, instructors will say, okay, you can have one, one sheet of notes is because the hope is that when you are making that sheet of notes, you actually have to study the material you're putting into the notes. So. You know, students think they're so clever when it's like, haha, I brought in my notes and I ha have to have a magnifying glass because I wrote everything on there that, uh, that we possibly could be asked. As an instructor, if I see that, I'd be like, that's awesome because that means you studied to put it onto the note. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you are studying and uh, uh, when making your notes, you, you're, you're connected, you're, you're thinking about what you're putting on the paper. All right, are there any questions that I could ask or answer about the test? Um, so the normal ones I get asked every time people people want to know how many questions are there? I don't know, like 15, something like that. 
Are there multiple choice, short answer? What's the format? Mostly short answer. I think there's like maybe two multiple choice, if that. So mostly it's gonna be uh, equations, stuff like that in test one. But that out of the way, any, any specific questions people might have? Can I do a partial pressure problem? Um, well, we're doing that today and that's not on test two. So I will be doing that in a few minutes. Yeah, that's our first topic, partial pressure. Any other questions before we jump right in? Let me close my window so you guys don't hear barking, barking dogs. Great, right. if there are no other questions, let's get into it. So as, as was mentioned, maybe a redox problem. <laughs> um, well, I didn't really plan for this to be like a review session. So what I will say for that is I need to cover this stuff. The SI session would be a perfect place for that or uh, talk to me in email. Um, but yeah, I need to use this time to actually catch up rather than review. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is uh, partial pressure. And the idea of partial pressure is that if you have multiple gases together in a container, they kind of act individual of each other. That is gases kind of ignore each other. So if I have a bunch of gases in like a balloon, I can measure the pressure those gases are exerting on the balloon as a whole, or I can measure the individual pressure due to each gas. That's the idea of partial pressure. So here, for example, uh, let me get my laser out. Okay, so for example, like we're talking about, we have a, uh, a mixture of four different gases, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and carbon dioxide. And we wanna know for each of these gases, what is the pressure being exerted by these gases? And what you do is you're doing your PV equals NRT. So that's that's actually what's, what this equation is. It, it looks weird, but it is just PV equals NRT. And the only difference is, is that we, we took V and divided each side by that. And then we just brought N out. And the only reason N is not in these parentheses is to emphasize that the pressure due to nitrogen is equal to the moles of nitrogen multiplied by RTV. And for every single gas that's in this mixture, RTV will always be the same, right? That doesn't change. So the only thing that changes between these gases is the moles of each individual gas. And Dalton's law of partial pressure says, if we know the individual pressure of each gas, we can combine those to get the total pressure of the gases. The pressure is additive. Right, completely additive. And with that, we also have this idea of mole fraction. So here we have each individual mole of gas and we can add those all up to know the total. So N total is the total amount of moles of gas in our mixture. Mole fraction is the moles of one type of gas divided by total gas. 
And so the fraction will be will range between zero and one, right? That's the only uh, range your mole fraction um, can be in. And it's just telling you like what percentage of this gas, of this mixture rather, is made out of individual gases. And it gets this fancy letter chi, uh, the Greek letter uh, chi, uh, just to say what mole fraction is. But that's the calculation for that. So our first problem looks at these questions. Um, so I will give a few minutes here for people to uh, at, le at least to get started on this, at least hopefully answer the first question. But here we have a gas mixture, 1.35 liters, 25C. And it has the partial pressures of each of these gases. So I, what I want you to tell me is total pressure, mole fraction, and then mass of each gas. So hopefully you can at least get the first part and get started on the second part. Some equations you need to know is PV equals nRT. That's a really bad equal sign. So PV equals nRT. Um, to go from Kelvin, remember it's C plus 273.15. R um, is given down here. And then here is our conversion down here for atmosphere Sator. So let's get started with that. And if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll be back in a, a couple minutes to go over the answers.
All right, so hopefully you got at least some of that done. And I, I realized probably not all of it as this is actually kind of a long question. Um, but let's, let's actually start to take a look at this. First off, what's the total pressure of the gas? Again, uh, Dalton's law of partial pressure says that if you have a mixture and you know the individual pressure of each gas, then you know the total pressure. So you simply just add them up. So it's 215 plus 102 plus 117. So the total pressure of this gas is 434 torr. So that's the first part, just added it. The second part, what's the mole fraction of each gas? Well, there's a couple of ways to do this and it's really, you know, it just depends which way you wanna do. Um, as long as you get the right answer, it's okay with me. But this definitely is one of those questions that um, is not obvious how to go about it the first time you do one of these questions and really test your understanding of what you can do with the ideal gas law, right? So let's remember the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, right? So as long as we know PV, R, and T, we can figure out number of moles. Well, for each gas, we do know PV and RT, and we just have to figure out N now. So for example, Let's do nitrogen. If I want to figure out gases or number of moles of gas, the first thing I need to do is take my pressure of nitrogen and convert it into atmospheres. And I have to do that because you should always look at what gas constant you want to use. If I want to use the ideal gas constant, or sorry, the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT, then my gas constant R as units of liters atmosphere mole Kelvin. So I have to make sure all my units are in there. So, so let's do that conversion. So 215 torr for every 760 torr, I have one atmosphere. Tors cancel out. And my pressure of nitrogen is 0 0.283 atmospheres. All right, B volume 1.35. So that's in liters, so that's fine. Moles, we're trying to figure out. Now temperature needs to be in K. Right now it's in C, so I can do that. So 273.15 plus 25 equals 298.15 K. So that's my T, that's my P. V is given, R is given. Now we can solve for N. So let's do that. So PV equals NRT. So 0.283 atmospheres multiplied by 1.35 liters. So in a gas mixture, right? Even though I give you the volume of the gas mixture, you can use that volume for each individual gas as well equals N, that's what we're trying to figure out. R constant multiplied by T, 298.15. Solve for N, so N equals 0.283 times 1.35 divided by 0 0.826, 206 times 298.15. The number of moles of N2 gas then is 0 0.0156 moles. So that's N2. And then you repeat this process for the other, other gases. So for O2, the pressure we would use is 0 0.134 atmospheres because that's the conversion from torus to atmospheres for O2. And for helium, we would use 
0 0.154 atmospheres because that's the conversion from tor to atmospheres. And then we do the PV equals NRT again. And the only thing that changes is pressure. So instead of 0.283, we'd put in 0.134 for oxygen. So that is 0 0.00740 moles. That is for helium, 0 0.00850 moles. So I just, I didn't write it all down just for the sake of time, but all I did here to get the moles is PV equals NRT using my different pressures. And so my total moles is I just add up the moles I found for N2, O2 and helium. So 0 0.0156 plus 0 0.00740 plus 0 0.00850. Add them all together and the total amount of moles from my mixture is 0 0.0315. All right, before I move on to mole fraction, since we did quite a bit there, anyone have any questions or did I uh, lose somebody with that logic before we move on to the actual mole fraction? Okay, so mole fraction, what you do is you just take the moles of one particular gas. I'm doing nitrogen. So nitrogen, we had 0 0.0156 moles. And the total amount of moles is 0 0.0315. So how many moles of nitrogen divided by the total moles? And when you do that, the fraction is 0.495. For oxygen, it's 0 0.00740, the moles of oxygen divided by the total, 0 0.0315. That is 0.235. And for helium, it's 0 0.00850 divided by 0 0.0315, which is 0 0.270. And as a check, you should see that your numbers all add up to one. So when I, you add your fractions together, they should be one or very close to one, like 0.98 or 1.01, something like that, very close to one. Um, if they're not, that usually tells you that some, some math error happened somewhere. But that, that is one way that you can go about and solve for mole fraction. You just need to know, how many moles of each individual gas you have. We did that through PV equals NRT. And then the fraction is just the amount of the individual moles divided by total moles. So questions about that relating to Dalton's partial pressure and mole fraction. Right. And the last one is actually review from um, way back early in the semester. Um, all we're doing is converting moles uh, to, to grams using molar mass. So for N2, right, we have 0 0.495 moles, or sorry, no, we don't. We have 0 0.0156 moles of N2. 
And looking up on the periodic table, one mole of N2 is 28 grams. And there should be some decimals past 28. I know that I was just, looks like I was being lazy when I originally did this. So that is 0 0.437 grams of N2. For O2, you do the same thing, but you just use a different molecular mass. Um, so since this is more or less review, so I'm just gonna give you the answers for you to check back on. 0 0.237 uh, grams of O2 and helium, 0 0.0340 grams of helium. So again, that's just using the periodic table and using molecular weights that you can calculate from the periodic table to convert from moles to grams. Again, we've done something like that similar. So that's, that's kind of the review part of the question. All right, with all of that laid out, any questions at all related to this question or partial pressure or anything? Okay, so we can move on then. If you do have a question and you're still typing out, feel free to do that. Uh, otherwise, let's go on to our, our next topic here, collection of gases over water. Um, so a lot of the times when you're doing an experiment or a chemical reaction and you're making a gas, the way to collect that gas is actually by filtering it through water. So that's what's being shown here, is that we have zinc being uh, uh, reacted with hydrochloric acid to make hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. The hydrogen gas will leave this container, go up through the water and bubble out of the water into this container. And the pressure of gas in this container is made out of two things. It's made out of the pressure of hydrogen, but also pressure of water or vapor pressure. So just a little background, no matter what temperature you are at, a certain percentage of water will change the gas. And you don't have to be at the boiling point for this to happen. You might have experienced this if you leave like a cup full of water or in my case, coffee out on a desk and you leave it for like a week and you come back and the coffee's all gone and there's just this gross brown film all over your cup. Um, that's because all the water's evaporated even though you know your room never got up to a hundred degrees C. That's because there's always, and this is something you'll talk about in Gen Chem 2, so you don't need to worry about the theory right now. I just want to introduce it. There's always a balance between how much liquid and how much gas of a substance there is. So for every single liquid in the world, it is constantly in balance with the gas portion of itself and the liquid portion of itself. So again, you will go into that topic in Gen Gum 2. So if it doesn't make much sense right now, no worries. Um, but what I do want you to know is that this idea of vapor pressure exists. Vapor pressure is the pressure due to gas water or better known as steam. So it's the pressure of steam. And how, what this vapor pressure is, is depending on the temperature, right? So the hotter it is, the higher the vapor pressure. The colder it is, the lower the vapor pressure, which makes sense. Um, living in Texas, uh, we, we can kind of know this. If you go by the river walk and it's really hot out, it might feel um, a little bit more damp than it would be if it was colder out. You can really feel this if you go to the ocean during the summer, though. Um, 
very humid. So what we want to look at is how can we know if we do a reaction and we're collecting gas over water, how much gas is due to our reaction? Uh, how much gas is due to vapor pressure? So I have this example question that, that looks at this topic. So we have zinc and a penny. And the zinc in a copper plated penny will dissolve in HCl if you take your penny and you just file it down so you remove the copper coat and the only thing left in there is the zinc penny. So the zinc will react with the hydrochloric acid. In a reaction given here, two protons plus solid zinc give you hydrogen gas and aqueous zinc. Yep, so that's that's the theory here. And it's same thing as the image we just looked on the previous page. So let's say we take zinc and a penny and we dissolve it. And we collect the gas over water at 25C. And the, the volume is 0.951 liters and pressure is 748 torr. What I want to know was how much hydrogen gas was collected if the partial pressure of water at 25C is 23.78 torr and your gas constant is there. So what I'm looking for is mass of hydrogen gas through this process. So we're, we're collecting this gas in a mixture of water and zinc. I want or sorry, water and hydrogen. I want to tell you to tell me how much hydrogen was produced. Two protons, um, two, so uh, H plus is a proton. So a hydrogen atom with no electrons is just a proton. So that's why I meant by two protons, two hydrogen atoms. All right, so tell me how much zinc was um, collected, or sorry, how much hydrogen gas was collected. Um, there's a lot of information in this question. A lot, of this, a lot of it's actually not useful to you. So your first goal is gonna be reading through this question and try to pick out uh, what is useful and what's not useful. Um, yeah, so try, try and do that. See if you can use PV equals NRT at some point. And although it says mass of gas due to time, if you just get moles of gas, that's fine. That's what I'm really interested in. How many moles of H2 gas did we produce? So see, see if you can use Dalton's partial pressure and vapor pressure idea to calculate moles of H2 gas for me. So I'll give people a few minutes to do this. Um, if you have questions, of course, always let me know. Otherwise, I will be back with the answer in, uh, let's say, two to three minutes.
Right, so hopefully he had a few minutes to muddle around with that. So for any question dealing with gases, again, we will probably always use the ideal gas equation for that. So what we should always do is figure out, you know, what are our variables? So the first thing is, let's figure out what the pressure of hydrogen is. So our total pressure is made out of two things. It's made out of the pressure from hydrogen gas, and it's also the pressure of H2O, right? Because that's, that's what we're doing. We're collecting this hydrogen gas over water. And so our total pressure is 748 torr. Pressure due to hydrogen is an unknown, but we do know the pressure from water, 23.78 at this temperature. So to get the pressure of hydrogen gas, you just take your total pressure minus your pressure of water. And so the pressure of due to hydrogen gas it's 724.22 torr. Again, this, all this is is Dalton's partial pressures again. So we know the pressure of hydrogen gas. The volume we know, 0.951, that's, that's given. Moles, well, that's what we're trying to figure out. R is always given. T is given too, so we have our one unknown, let's check for R. R is in liters, volumes in liters, that's fine. Our pressure should be in atmospheres, right now it's in torr. So let's do that conversion. I need to get into atmospheres to work with my R. So 724.22 torr, 760 torr, one atmosphere. So our pressure due to hydrogen gas is 0 0.95292 atmospheres. Moles, that's what we're solving, so that's fine. K, we need to convert our temperature. So, for, so this was P, this is T. 25 plus 273.15 is 298K. That's done. Solve for N. So let me redo the, um, let me erase this. So PV equals NRT, rearrange that for N equals uh, PV divided by RT, which is P is 95292. Volume is 0 0.951 divided by R, which is 0 0.08206 times T, which is 298. So the total moles of hydrogen gas that we collected is 0 0.0371 moles of H2. Then you can just use the periodic table, convert from H2 moles to grams using molecular weight, but we'll stop it right here for moles of H2 gas. So now that you saw that worked out, again, this is really another partial pressure question in disguise. Um, so whenever you see collected over water, your mind should go to partial pressure and you will be told, okay, the partial pressure of water at that temperature is this. And from there, we can go and figure out, okay, from this logic, what was the pressure of H2? Then PV equals NRT to get moles of H2. So seeing that worked out, any questions about partial pressures here or this question or any questions that we went over uh, so far?
All right, if not, we can move on. So the next topic we're gonna to look at is actually something we've looked at before in terms of liquid and that's stoichiometry, right? So we talked about stoichiometry before, how uh, given a chemical equation, we have these numbers and these ends, these are our coefficients. So they just represent whole numbers. So for example, this could be one, three, whoa, did not wanna do that. One, three, then like two and one. So that's what those ends are. And we looked at previously, if I know mass of element A, I can convert that to moles of element A using molecular weight. From there, if given a chemical equation using stoichiometry, which are these numbers in front, I can convert from one amount of moles, so from A to B. And then in B, I can go back to grams using molecular weight. So this idea right here will be on test two because we looked at this um, for material on test two. So hopefully we are familiar with this idea of how to switch between different molecules. For gases, it's we have the same idea, except we can use the ideal gas law to go to moles. So if we know the pressure of a gas, we know the volume of a gas, and we know the temperature of a gas, we can figure out moles of that gas. And that's what we just did on the previous problem. N equals PV divided by RT. That's basically what this says. And then from stoichiometry again, we can go from moles to moles and we could work out like partial pressure um, in B once, once we have moles of B. So stoichiometry is more or less the same thing for gases as it was for solids and liquids. Uh, the only caveat being, since we're working with gases, a lot of times we're gonna be working in pressures instead of masses. So usually we'll say we have this pressure of gas except instead of this mass of gas. That's like the only difference. So let's see, yeah. So the last problem we're probably gonna work on today is uh, this one that has to deal with stoichiometry. And it's actually a pretty good warm up for test two uh, since you do not need to know how to use stoichiometry in test two. So here we have uh, automobile airbags. The way they work is that after a serious impact, a chemical reaction happens where you have solid sodium nitrate, or that's actually not nitrate, uh, but NaN3, that will break down into solid sodium and nitrogen gas. That's why that bag uh, inflates is because this breaks down extremely fast to make nitrogen gas and you just run into a big old pillow of nitrogen gas. So let's say you got into a crash and your bag filled up to a volume of 11.8 liters. Therefore, what mass of NaN3 in grams was required to inflate the airbag upon impact? and assume you're working in STP conditions. Again, um, something that will be on the test as well, make sure you know what STP means. So time's running out. So I'm gonna start working through this, um, um, this just to make sure that we have it covered. So let's, let's work at the logic here. My final answer should be grams of NaN3. That's what I want. But to start with, I'm given a volume and STP, if you remember what that means, T is 273K, P equals one atmosphere. So 
I'm given a V, I'm given a P, I'm given a T, and I'm also given an R. So I have four variables, one unknown, so I can solve for N. The question is, what molecule am I solving for in this gas? That gives us, and to do that, we need to go back to our uh, chemical equation. So sodium azide, so that I finally remember what that's called, that's an azide, that's a solid. So this is the gas law. So we can't be solving for moles of a solid. Sodium is a solid. So if we solve for PV equals NRT, we are solving for nitrogen gas as this is the only gas we had. If you had multiple gases in this equation, the N you would be solving for is for those gases combined. So it would be uh, uh, much more tricky to do something like this. But in this equation, we only have one gas. So the logic that I'm gonna use is ideal gas law. Solve for moles of N2. From there, stoichiometry to solve for moles of NaN3. From there, molecular weight of NaN3 to solve for grams of NaN3. That is what I want my answer to be in. So as long as I follow that pathway, I should have the correct answer. So before I actually put numbers to this, do people have questions about the logic flow of how to solve this problem? Did I lose uh, people at some point? Not, did some, they did not follow what I did and just want me to repeat something? Let me know. Why do you need only nitrogen? Um, well, if you look at the equate of uh, what the information we're given, right? I'm telling you that a bag is filling up and we're in STP conditions, right? So I'm giving you all the information you need to solve for moles of a gas using the PV equals NRT equation. And the only gas we have in this equation is nitrogen. So using PV equals NRT, I can solve for moles of nitrogen. And then stoichiometry says, as long as I have nitrogen or any, any molecule really, but for nitrogen, as long as I know these coefficients, I can tell you the amounts of sodium or I can tell you the amounts of sodium azide. Because once you have one molecule, as long as you're in moles, you can switch to any other molecule in the equation. So that's why we're solving for nitrogen. It's the information we're given that allows us to solve for nitrogen. And then once we have that, we can go to sodium azide. That make a little sense? Like you don't need to solve for solid sodium because one, it, with this information given, it's impossible. But two, using stoichiometry, you can jump from nitrogen all the way to sodium azide. So let me start filling this in. So pressure, so I'm gonna start doing PV equals NRT down here. Pressure is one atmosphere. Volumes 11.8 liters. N unknown, R given, T 273. So solve for PV equals NRT, N is 0 0.527 moles of uh, N2 gas. Make sure that you are writing down what element you're solving for, because it can get confusing if you just put regular moles. 
right? So time's running out, so I'm gonna kind of do this a little bit fast. So 0 0.527 moles of N2 gas. So using my uh, logic here, I've solved for moles of N2. Now I can use stoichiometry for sodium azide. So for every three moles of sodium gas, which is here, I make two moles of sodium azide. That's just stoichiometry, just reading those coefficients, making sure that my moles of sodium, since they started, or my moles of N2 gas, sorry, sorry at the top, moles of N2 gas have to be on the bottom, they cancel out. Now my unit is moles of sodium azide and you can use the molecular weight from the periodic table to get in the grams. So one mole of sodium azide is 65.01 grams of sodium azide. Moles cancel out. My final unit, the only unit that's left is grams of sodium azide, which is what I want my answer to be in. So that's good. Now, using these strain tracks, multiply everything at the top divided by everything on the bottom, which is just three. And the amount of sodium azide that was in my airbag before it inflated must have been 21.8 grams of sodium azide. So that is how we can use uh, PVRT, solve for moles of a gas. And if you have a chemical equation using stoichiometry coefficients, like we saw for both solids and liquids at this point, so this is the third time we're seeing this concept, we can go to any other molecule in our equation and figure out moles or weight of that compound. Right, so that is the end of time, and we are over, but any quick questions about that? We got 22.84. It's possible that I, I did a miscalculation there. Um, I can just do that really quick. Do, do, do. 0 0.527 times 65.01 times two divided by three. Yeah, so 22. So it looks like I can't read my own handwriting. 22.8 instead of 21. Wait. Any other questions about how that was done? Alrighty then. Um, so test on Wednesday. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, good luck to you. Don't rely on not studying and just think because you have your notes, you'll do well because you won't. I can promise you that. But if you study, you shouldn't need your notes anyways, other just and other than to just remember equations anyways. So um, with that, good luck. And I will see people on Friday. Take care.